Many scientists and archaeologists believe the earliest settlers of the Pacific came from Taiwan. In New Zealand, a group of scientists think they've found new evidence studying languages using computers to trace the path of the ancient mariners. Archaeological evidence has long suggested that the Pacific was first settled over 5,000 years ago. But language is proving one of the strongest links between the Pacific and Taiwan. Many of the languages spoken across the islands of Asia and the Pacific are from the Austronesian language family. It's one of the largest language families in the world uh, with an incredible geographic spread, spread all the way from Taiwan, uh, along Borneo, Sulawesi and Indonesia and then out to the far reaches of Micronesia and Polynesia so Fijian, Samoan, Tongan, uh, Rapa Nui and of course Māori in uh, Aotearoa. Linguists have been analysing Austronesian languages for more than 100 years but a University of Auckland team is the first to use computer modelling to map how language has evolved across the Pacific. I spent, I guess, six years or so building this large database of uh, Austronesian languages. There are clear similarities between many Pacific languages and Taiwanese, like the words for the number two in some of Taiwan's indigenous languages and in New Zealand's Maori language. In Māori, it's, it's Rua, and in so the Aboriginal languages of Taiwan, like uh, Amis, it's uh, Tusa. In uh, Paiwan, it's uh, Dusa, and then Rua or Lua in most parts of Polynesia. So you can see really striking uh, linguistic connections there. Computer modelling maps the meaning of words and similar sounds to build a family tree of related languages. We estimated that all the 1,200 Austronesian languages can be traced back to Taiwan about 5,200 years ago. Imagine this is just the, the little segment of the tree for all the Eastern Polynesian languages. And we can see that they all share a common ancestor, say. So it's by getting a measure of uh, how long the branches are along the tree, how many changes have accumulated, how many new words have been introduced, how many old words have been replaced, that we're able to estimate the dates. The tree is really nice showing the relationships. Of the, the team's most significant actually, finding is I'm being able to use the development of language to time when the different parts of the Pacific were settled by the Austronesian speakers who originally set out from Taiwan. What we could show was we could pinpoint specific parts of that language tree that uh, where there were definite pauses, uh, definite slowdown in the rate uh, at which language was spreading and, and regions where there were definite speed ups. And they could then line those up with what they knew from archaeology and it turned out that uh, the language information and the archaeological information lined up very well in a number of places exactly as we'd expect. Linguists discovered the term for outrigger canoe first appears in Taiwan just before the Taiwanese migrated to the Philippines. So what that suggests is that the, the people in Taiwan didn't have outrigger canoes, uh, but then some of them uh, invented these outrigger canoes, and it was that invention, that cultural invention, that enabled them to get across the Bashi Strait from Taiwan to the Philippines. Then there's a complete explosion, so here's the Philippines, and in less than a thousand years the Austronesian speakers sped down and then out to the far reaches of the Pacific, to um, New Caledonia, to Vanuatu, to Tonga, Fiji and Samoa, all the way... That rapid migration spawned the evolution of many new languages. Imagine there's one language, and for whatever reason, maybe people move to a different island, it, it, the communities start to differentiate. There are new words that are introduced. One example might be uh, terms for rainbow. In uh, lots of parts of the Pacific, it, it's uh, something like nua nua. But in eastern Polynesia, there's been a, a change where uh, a long A has sound has been added at the front of that. So uh, in Māori, it's uh, aniwa niwa. In Rapa Nui, it's a nui nui. And in Hawaiian, it's a nua nua. The language patterns help map the migration to central Polynesia around 3,000 years ago into Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. But it's not clear why it's at least another thousand years before people moved to Tahiti, Hawaii and New Zealand. 
So it's curious, why such a rapid pulse, and then why such a long pause before the settlement of the most remote parts of Polynesia? Some people have suggested it was the invention of big double-hulled canoes, much, much bigger than this, canoes that could take 200 people. Uh, and it seems like they might have been necessary for the really vast oceanic voyages to get from Tahiti and the Marquesas up to Hawaii or to get down to Aotearoa, New Zealand. Some people think it was changes in climate, changes in the uh, El Nino pattern that made those areas more possible to voyage to. So there's a heck of a lot more to be uh, uncovered. This research is not just about how the Pacific was settled, but an insight into the spirit of human endeavour. Well, this is one of the greatest human expansions um, ever, into this you know, massive expanse of uncharted globe um, for the very first time. And about that time, you know, 4,000 to 3,000 years ago, Europeans were just timidly exploring along the edge of the Mediterranean, and here are uh, the Austronesians, who became the Polynesians, doing these amazing oceanic kind of voyages.